The Cardano Depin sector is popping off with Yagon partnering up with a Fortune 500 company and Digium lending a partnership with Huawei. Connecting Web2 companies to Web3 startups seems the new way to go. Now we have Stuff.io and during an AMA this week they mentioned being in talks with one of the big five publishers and what I suspect is one of the big three music labels. So is Stuff next? This is gonna be a long video. There are a lot of details which were shared. I'm gonna give you my notes. No, put playback speed 2x, listen to that like a podcast. But listen, because there were really some good tidbits of information in there. Um, so it was a one hour, 15 minute AMA on Discord with Josh and Ben, the co-founders of Stuff.io and they gave us a general business update. They started by saying that they are in talks with very large IP holders, uh, but they can't say who it is. Until it's signed, they cannot say. It's like Mark Cuban, when he signed, I mean, when he invested, they couldn't say it was officially him until all was agreed. Uh, so, hey, we don't know who it is, but something is in the work. Now, they were really surprised because a lot of sport franchises uh, reached out to them, uh, apparently for video playing cards, that's what I heard. So I know there's something like that uh, called NBA Top Shots. So is it something like this? I mean, I guess these are not really cards. I'm not sure, but I mean, it would make sense, I guess, you know, it's an NFT. Uh, but why it already exists, so would they pivot to stuff? Or is it a different sport franchise, like maybe the NFL, who wants to do something similar? I don't know, but it's interesting because this is a use case that they didn't have in mind. And people from outside actually saw the opportunity. It shows how versatile, uh, when we talk about content, like how different it can be and how uh, the stuff technology can adapt. What people are interested in is uh, you know, the DRM technology, how to protect all this content which is online. Uh, they also talk with a lot of music label. They think the blockchain is uh, the future of music, like for sure. Uh, and stuff is the first solid solution. Actually, they say that conversations are accelerating. Book.io traditional publishing industry kind of slow to move, music seems very different. Like they were starving for such solution. So we may see something big happening on the music side first. Uh, they explained that they all experimented with blockchain and got burned. You know, the NFTs were public. Uh, they did some streaming, fractionalized royalties. It didn't really take off. What's interesting is that they mentioned that basically a few players control the whole music industry. I put that into Grok and uh, so the AI from X and told me that, yep, you have the big three in music. Um, I don't remember them now, uh, but I know that one is Universal Music Group. And I think it may be the one they're talking with because they mentioned, Josh was talking about it, how they are meeting with CIOs, so Chief Innovation Officers and he mentioned a label that was out in new york but also in california that's universal music group they also mentioned large ip old holder yes universal would be one of those uh, it's pure speculation on my end just based on the locations that josh mentioned uh, but that that would be definitely very very big uh, interestingly enough they also have an interest in blockchain for transparency because everything with royalties and stuff like that is very opaque at the moment. So there's also, I guess, some kind of um, capital efficiency benefit in using blockchain. So that part is, okay, kind of speculation on my end. But then there's something that is not speculation. And this is that they're talking with one of the biggest publishers. Uh, so we have the big five. I think New York was mentioned again. Unfortunately, all big five are based in New York. So, <laughs> so it's one of those. Uh, 
And so they are in talks and apparently it's progressing very seriously to the point that the publisher uh, will or is about to ask for a guarantee. A guarantee is basically a large sum of money that stuff would have to pay the publisher to be able to, uh, to partner up with them and use their catalog. Uh, it might sound counterintuitive, like, hey, give me your, your, your catalog and you, know, you get a split on the sales proceeds and, uh, you know, fair and square. Uh, the thing is that publishers, um, well, they move slowly and what they actually sell is their reputation. Why an offer would go to one publisher and not the other? Because remember, customers of publishers are not directly readers, but more authors. Authors go with their work, with their script, uh, to see the publishers. So a publisher cannot just you know, try every new NFT thing, Web3 thing, AI thing like that, and then get the thousands of offers to sign up and then uh, womp womp, it didn't work. Uh, they, they cannot get burned like this. So they ask for a guarantee. We had this example actually of Jeff Bezos. When he launched Kindle, he had to put a lot of money on the line to convince publishers to, um, to partner with Amazon and do those eBooks. And Josh was saying that it feels very similar, that they're on the cusp of radically changing the book industry and publishers are listening, they need guarantees. Uh, we don't know how much is the guarantee. I have no idea, maybe a million dollars. I have no idea. But um, the thing is that it can be paid into chunks. And in that way, it's kind of more accessible because they're going to pay for the first chunk, get a part of the catalog. And I mean, we're talking a publisher, maybe a million titles in their whole list. Uh, I think it's Penguin Random House. They publish like 70,000 books per year. I don't know since how long they exist, but you no, know, 1 million title titles, it doesn't seem so crazy. So let's say a million. You get a million titles, maybe 10%, 100,000. Can you imagine you go to book.io, you have 100,000 books to choose from, and uh, maybe at the same price as Amazon, except that you get true ownership of them. So then, once we have the bookshelves full and um, you know, more users will come, more regular users, they will buy those and with the money we make with that, we can pay out, pay down rather, the, the other chunks of the guarantee. That's how it's going to work. They're going to put up a catalyst proposal for that. Catalyst proposal will just cover a portion of the guarantee. They are not asking for everything. and. Uh, they are thinking that, okay, if all goes well, we get funded partially by Catalyst. They want to give back. They said probably not one-to-one, -one, but give back something. Uh, as a reminder, Josh uh, is, uh, I think, or candidated to be on the Interim Constitutional Committee of Cardano. So he's well aware of you know, how the Cardano ecosystem works. And uh, like we have the stuff pool, the stake pool, they want to give back to the ecosystem. So even if it's not one-to-one, -one, it's definitely appreciated. Then someone asked, hey, what if you don't get funded? They said, no problem. They didn't really raise that much money at the beginning. No, they, went, they didn't go around that much. So they feel confident that they can then reach out to more people. Uh, and yeah, imagine. The, the proposition, let's say they need a million dollars, they go to Mark Cuban, say, hey, Mark, look, um, you have this top publisher, one of the big five, they want to do it, they need the guarantee. And if we get all these million titles, we're going to make a lot of money because we're going to sell a lot of books. I, like, it seems like a good deal, or maybe I, I'm missing something. Um, what was also cool is that they mentioned that they actually met the CEO and that they feel like the, the red carpet is rolled out for them, that they are meeting with CEOs, CTOs, Chief Technical Officers, CIOs, Chief Innovation Officers. They really meet the top level of those big companies. 
which means that there's a real interest and they're talking with decision makers. So it's not like, hey, we send them an email and uh, they're studying a white paper. It's not like that, they're meeting with the CEO already and talks about guarantee. So I feel like we're very, very close of onboarding one of the big five publishers. They said in the prayer company, uh, Bookshout, they, it took them four years to, to onboard one of the big publishers. So they have those connections now. So that's really, really big. I uh, really hope they will make it. I'll definitely vote for this proposal in Catalyst in the next fund, which, is, which starts the end of November, I believe. Uh, then they mentioned that they are working as fast as they can. Uh, the plan is to scale up to be able to have multiple mints per day and multiple massive mints per week. Um, there was a question about the decentralization of the librarian, so basically the e-reader. And they said that they're not actively working on it, but they're actively discussing. Um, I think they mentioned Midnight for so the privacy partner chain of Cardano coming up next year, I suppose. Um, not sure how it fits into it, to be honest, but okay, we're talking about it, studying the possibility. It has to, to be there. Uh, it, I guess it's a requirement from the crypto community. Um, but also, it just makes sense because we don't know what may happen to, to stuff and book. Then there was a question about doing uh, more means with the stuff token. Explain that at the moment they use Inception, which is, let's call it the internal self-publishing portal. And that works. All the Halloween means, we'll talk about them later, went through Inception. So it works. It is there, just not open to public. Um, and that the idea is that all of this minting gets paid with stuff eventually. And here I have a big question mark because uh, like literally, I'm paraphrasing, but Ben was saying really something like, uh, yeah, all of this is supposed to be paid with stuff eventually, all of this, while just talking about internal mints. So now I have the question mark like, so what? Even all the means that will be done by book, not by uh, no self publishing portal, but by book in general, will all of this require stuff? And uh, if we have a big five publisher with a million titles and they need stuff, that's a lot of stuff. Um, so something to, to think about. Uh, and to get more clarity on, uh, they said that they need to make the deal with the publisher to have more users before activating the consume to earn. Consume to earn was planned for this year. I guess this means it's out of the window for this year, at least. That it looks like there's a contingency with uh, or dependency rather with the publisher signing. So we'll have to wait a bit more for that, but it makes sense. Actually, it makes a lot of sense because if you have a lot of users and then they start earning and then you, know, you have the side of people receiving the token, then you have the side of people uh, using the token to mint the books, then we have the closed loop economy. All right, uh, then about stuff use cases. Yep, they plan to tick them all, all that are in the white paper. Uh, of course, minting content, but also access to analytics and advertising opportunities. Uh, Josh was mumbling something about content creators able to accept stuff as payment and then being able to get a discount when using it to mint their stuff. So it looks like you may have two ways of minting. You pay cash or you pay using stuff and if you pay stuff, it's cheaper. This would be kind of cool because it would or to add by, by pressure to, to stuff, basically, for the people who want to buy it. Um, but also it shows that you're a content creator, you, you plan on putting out content on a regular basis. Or maybe you don't want to uh, no, to pay, like to, to buy stuff on a, on a decentralized exchange and then uh, use it to mint and then you get paid 
in USD or ADA or whatever. And then you have to convert again to stuff. Maybe you want to be paid in stuff directly. So you can just use that and you, know, you, you use a portion to mint your new thing and you keep the rest uh, or you convert it as, a, as revenue. So basically stuff is to be seen in a currency because it can be used for payments and well, creators can come up with their own way of using it. Um, actually, they said that music labels have a specific interest in the social aspect of stuff.io. Remember, there'll be book clubs, let's call them social clubs, where as an artist, you will be able to connect with your fans. And the idea was that you could be a fan and pay maybe a monthly subscription in stuff to get access to the social club. And maybe you have a big artist, they limit the number of uh, of seats in the social clubs and they interact with people maybe on a daily basis or so some kind of private social media place uh, and maybe they can you know, do some interviews some AMAs some chats with everyone um, drop them some special stuff because these are the hardcore fans that they want to take care of and this is a way to monetize the social connections that artists will be able to create with their fans. So it's a new revenue stream. And that is definitely something that artists are looking for. Uh, remember, maybe 30, 40 years ago, uh, artists, music artists will make music, will make music and earn from selling records. But now it moved to uh, making money from concerts and from the merch they sent, not really for selling music, because anyway, now everything is free for streaming. So a new revenue stream is important to them. Uh, there was a question about uh, mint and print in different languages. Uh, they said that if it's digital, it's not really a problem to, um, to have a book in a different language, but if you print it, it's completely different. It's like a completely new book because the, the IP right holder in a different language might not be the same as the one in the, let's say, the basic language, English. And also, uh, what the number of words is not the same when a number of characters. So you don't have the same number of pages. So each language, when you print it, which book, when you print it in a new language, has to be considered as a completely new book. Uh, however, they're working on a way with AI to take a file like a Word document or EPUB um, and automatically format it so that it's ready to print. So maybe this process will be made easier. Question about offline mode. Yep, being worked on high on the priority list coming soon. Question about how to get friends to invest. Basically, uh, if they are accredited investors, meaning revenue of 1 million USD a year, something like that, then they can talk. If not, just get them on the website, give them a book, get them to experience uh, the platform and uh, you know, swallow the red pill that, hey, I can own my digital stuff. And this by itself is powerful enough. They can buy books and just enjoy the books or the videos or the music albums. Um, and then they just talk about it and this will make the platform grow, which when you are holding collectibles is um, is a good thing. Uh, question about onboarding. Uh, so it, this should be a community slash company joint effort. Uh, can give books away, do collaboration with artists. In the Pearl company, they would do bulk ebook sales. We're talking hundreds of thousands. And that was great for user acquisitions because they would give those books because we have to go on the platform and well, they get something for free. Uh, so they go in there and they explain the platform and hey, they download the app and hey, they see what else is on sale. Oh, those cool covers owning our stuff. So that's a great way to, to get more people. Uh, actually, they are working on this multi-use code. One code that can be used several times. You can imagine 
an offer at the conference, they put the code on their presentation and say, hey, you can download maybe uh, my, my short story that I made not so long ago uh, on book.io, here's the code. Uh, so people come for the products and um, that's very different than what, than, than what we have now in the sense that you have people coming to download the book, the video, whatever, and then they explore, they are consumers. It's sort of like now where it's more crypto people who buy a lot of things just to speculate. I mean, it's great to grow your collection and have great covers and you know, maybe you have plans of selling some prints of them. That's fair. But there's definitely the, the profit-taking lens. Whereas with a multi-use code and just general advertising, it's just normal people. They don't care so much about making money. They want to own their stuff and if they can sell it and make some money back, that's cool. If they can earn some stuff tokens that allow them to buy more stuff, that's cool too. Uh, ben took a moment to talk about how he thinks that people underestimate the power of connecting audience and creators that is virtually impossible now for a creator that has thousands of listeners on Spotify to actually connect with them and talk with them. So this, in his opinion, is a real game changer, a real argument that stuff has. Then question about RJ, how is he doing? Why did he leave the company? Long story short, he's a startup guy. He likes building or no, alone. He's an architect, whoever. But as stuff was scaling up, he was more becoming a manager and just not his thing, plus being burnt out. So he left. Uh, we learned that they did several startups together. There was even a startup where RJ left and then come back, came back later. So the door is open, no bad blood, best of luck. So all good. And uh, the, the IT team is still uh, you know, speeding up, still delivering, still working on, uh, on several new things like the Kubernetes integration uh, and so on. So they are not slowing down because uh, no, one person left, just everyone else is stepping up. Uh, we learned that they have some meeting with investors lined up, meaning Ingram, um, I don't know if Mark Cuban is on the list as well, and uh, the Bertelsmann group. So I guess hey, it's end of year, so they're trying to, <laughs> to look where, how did it go. A uh, question about Charles Token, Beard Token, and About Seth Episode Zero. Uh, so about Charles, they say they talked with JJ, who's kind of the right-hand man of uh, Charles. They got clearance to do things with the token. Actually, someone bought, I think, 30,000 ADA worth of it after hearing that. Uh, so someone has uh, some confidence. Um, they said that, yeah, Charles apologized for not getting clearance. Like he had some plans and then realized, oh, we need to... In to involve legal in the end, so it took more time than expected. He's a very busy man as well. So yeah, the hype definitely died, uh, but it may come back if they announce some crazy stuff. The idea is that, uh, same for Beard, they didn't write off those media tokens. They say they have something in their back pocket, um, just that, you know, they, they are still a startup working on many different things at the same time. Uh, and it takes time, which in my opinion is a missed opportunity because tokens that are kind of meme in a sense, um, you need the hype and you need to sustain the hype. I think it's going to be hard to, to come back. About Surf Episode Zero is very different though because, um, well, if they give more discounts and if you have the self-publishing portal and you get some utility linked to that, like maybe discount, if you hold about stuff episode zero, then then things can change uh, because you can put utility. Media tokens, uh, not sure. Depends on Charles. Then question, uh, if they can give us some alpha. Yeah, they just said they cannot say uh, who they are in talks, in talks with because if they do so, it will impact the share price of these companies. I'm not sure which way, to be honest, uh, but this means that they're publicly listed. So it's not random companies, so it's like a small publisher or, or local music label. It's more important 
done that um, and they mentioned a specific episode where they met you know, the CEO, CTO, CIO of a music label and they had to read the whole white paper and had very specific questions. So the interest is real. They are not taking time of their calendar to just, you know, do like uh, the shark tank and they listen, hey, what's your, what's your sales pitch? It's like, you have an interesting solution. We looked deeply into it. Let's discuss more to see if it's a good fit for us. So a uh, lot of things they, that are happen, happening, but they can't talk about yet. The thing is that those partners, they're not startup. No, they have a meeting today. When is the next meeting? In two weeks, in one month. So it moves more slowly, but at the same time, it's an opportunity for the staff team to keep on building. And finally, they ended with saying that uh, they apologize for not doing AMA for a long time. They'll try to do it more often. Um, and uh, also mentioned that they talk with Dan Friedman. Not sure uh, about what. And also talking with Lena for the frog stuff. So maybe there's progress for that. If you bought uh, the frog stuff pre-sale uh, pass with Genesis asset, maybe you'll get the first episode uh, dropped soon. Stay tuned. Okay, quick look at the mints this week, starting off with new series Monday Meditations Audio, very small quantity, 200 units, The Spark Zarathustra Audiobook, uh, yep, 45 OG price, floor 50, classic, it sold out at least, and covers were pretty cool. Then we got uh, airdrop for the Monster Audio series, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, which was also the airdrop of the, the original Monster series two years ago already. Um, and uh, yep, floor of 80, 517 pieces. We had the Flash Mint on Halloween, The Devil is an Ass. I'm not sure what this book is about. Um, but yep, 25 if you hold uh, My Lady Nicotine, uh, but you can see for 44, offer 30, so if you got the discount, you're in slight profit. Uh, another mint that happened on Halloween is the Wendigo from Monster 2.0, just half minted, uh, but it's much higher quantity, 666, uh, 29, uh, sorry, 28 OG price, 30 floor, classic. Uh, no offer since it's still minting, basically. Uh, then we had finally, it's been a long time, a mint which we could pay with, or we had to pay with in stuff token, 800 stuff tokens, around 20 ADA at current price. For the book of Halloween, fantastic covers in there. New series, book holidays. Maybe you can expect something for you know, Veterans Day. Uh, Christmas, New Year's Eve, not sure. Uh, but hey, 20 ADA, I mean, in stuff, unique price, by the way. You didn't get a discount on that. Offer 25, for doing fine. Or maybe you managed to sell at floor for a 3X. 3X, hey, pretty good. The Book of Halloween was actually so limited to one purchase per wallet and two, only 200 copies, yep. But I like that they use the, the stuff to mint this because instead of keeping stuff in your wallet uh, and you know, it's burning a hole in there, you don't do anything with it, might as well uh, sell it. And like it's not direct sell pressure on the DEX, it's just uh, you no know, changing hands on its own. Uh, lastly, there was the Monster 2.0 airdrop, also at 666. They maintained on purpose this number even though there were less sets completed, meaning that some people got extra copies. So that's always welcome. Uh, airdrop and floor at 20 ADA, maybe because people got extras, so they don't care to get them out. So look, Halloween, we had uh, two airdrops, the legend of Sleepy Hollow and the Werewolf. We had three mints, uh, so Flash Mint, Monster 2.0, and the book Holidays 1 in stuff. And all of this, I mean all of these mints, they went through Inception, the kind of internal self-publishing portal. So it looks like, looks like it's working pretty well. I wonder what else they need to add uh, to open it up. Maybe some 
legal stuff, some guidelines to make sure, uh, you know, no one comes in and just means uh, Harry Potter. And actually there was another mint that was planned this week. It was on Tuesday. It was About Stuff episode 5 with Jesse James. Jesse James is this dude here from West Coast Chopper. He had a show on uh, Discovery. Kind of cool to see someone who's actually on TV being on stuff. Apparently there's some IP issues. Hopefully this gets resolved and we get to see this episode, this episode in the following week. Now let's talk about the stuff token. The downtrend continues. We are below the token sell price, uh, 0.79 cent. It's the lowest it has ever been. What a discount. I did double dip last week. Um, yeah, no use case, I guess. People get tired, maybe new things on the horizon. However, when we look at the number of holders, it's pretty strong. On the seven days, it's just minus 3%. It went up quite a lot. This was a nice trade for uh, whoever got it. Uh, I saw there was a whale who dumped a million tokens. It was like uh, roughly $8,000 worth. Uh, so, yep. I don't know if this whale is out or not. So what's up with the token? Hey, we heard about it during the AMA. We need consume to earn, so then we can have the other side of the equation, which is asking people to use stuff to mint assets. Now it's to think about it. Uh, let's say you have this publisher with a million titles, and well, you're not gonna mint only one book. You're gonna mint at least a uh, hundred. So I was thinking, imagine you just need one stuff token per DA. Uh, so basically, for 1 million titles multiplied by 100, which is conservative, I would say. Uh, uh, no, not this way, but rather this way. So 100 million stuff. That's $800,000 uh, at current price of buy pressure. Uh, and uh, look, I feel you would get only $337,000 uh, worth. So, yep. That's what people have to bear in mind. This is one publisher, 100 copies. You have uh, best-selling offers. They do a few million copies alone. Of course, not saying that hey, this million, these few million copies will all be through book.io, but uh, you have to think like book is amazon that they signed this big publisher and they got a lot of books available and they do advertising they do those multi-use coupon codes they get a lot of people and those people buy books like normal users and then they receive the token and token needs to be used to sell them more things so at some point it's it's a crazy economy on its own when you have millions of users and dozens or hundreds of millions of books. I say books, but then you have to expand that to music. Imagine music. They said uh, conversations are accelerating more on the music side. Let's say they get Universal. And I don't know who Universal is, uh, you know, what is their best artist, but it's easy, easier to imagine or to think about an artist who sells millions of albums than an offer, maybe. Uh, and then they really start and hey, you can buy a song. Maybe you just want one song, you don't want the whole album. Um, or maybe they really song by song, I don't know. But how many millions or even billions of uh, items do you have between songs? movies, uh, videos, like YouTube videos, um, books. You have 1 billion ebook readers in the world. Even if they read only one book each per year, that's 1 billion ebooks you need to create. Again, not saying that everything will be on book.io, but it's to make people realize the size of the market. And once they get this publisher or this big label, it's like flipping the switch and then you have a company, like a multi-billion dollar company, that will need to buy stuff token. 
Is this confirmed? We are not so sure. It's the idea on the white paper. Will they make special deals with those companies? I don't know. I mean, they need to pay a guarantee to a publisher so that they're able to sell their books. So, I don't know, will the publisher use this guarantee to buy stuff tokens afterwards? I'm not sure. So this is still a bit opaque, but uh, if it is indeed the end goal, as Ben mentioned, that all of this, all this means are supposed to leverage the stuff token, is gonna be crazy amount of volume. It's gonna be crazy. The past company had 6 million users. Put 6 million people on Book.io now. I mean, once we have maybe 100,000 titles, different titles. It's gonna be a lot of token that they will earn and will probably never sell. So you have a big part of, I think, consume to earn that will be captured there. So I don't really expect um, you know, the liquidity to grow so much. So maybe that's why they did a mint in stuff token, to replenish their coffers so they can sell maybe OTC, this stuff token. Not sure, a lot of, uh, no question marks, but it doesn't change the fact that self-publishing portal will bring in a lot of people, a lot of different media types, a lot of different videos, uh, items, as I say, to create. And if, it's, if it is even just one stuff per item, then it goes super fast because you don't want to sell just one. Imagine YouTube content creator, 1 million subscribers. Oh, okay, I'm gonna make a video, maybe I'll limit it at, uh, I don't know, 10,000. Okay, I need 10,000 stuff. So I need, uh, uh, I don't know why it, it flips to Ada, but it's okay. I need $80 worth for my one video. I make one video per week or several per weeks, and I'm just one guy. And then you add hundreds of guys like that. I think, I mean, I keep on accumulating. You do what you want. But just if you are watching this video and you feel a bit desperate, say hey, what's happening and everything, no, no one is on the market now. Once we have those humongous companies coming in, those big content creators, then it's gonna take off. And if Book can convince a big publisher and one big music label, I think you know, more independent artists will follow suit as well. So hang in there and good luck. And that's it for this week. It was awesome to get so many business updates. No names were given, but that's doesn't really matter. Big publisher, big music label uh, coming up sometime soon, maybe six months, maybe a year. I don't know, but book and stuff, they had the street credit to talk to those CEOs, to talk to these important people in those big companies. So we are not playing around. It's not uh, a crypto startup with dreams. It's like they are just one step away from it hitting it big. So really exciting time. Uh, looking forward to what's next. Thank you for watching. Take care. Happy Halloween. Happy All Saints Day. Happy Diwali. If you celebrate. And I'll see you soon.